Sherman. 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 If you want to get technical. All right. Sherman. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Season Zero. I'm here with... Pete Shurman. See? I froze. <laughs> season Zero! Hey, everybody. Welcome to Season Zero. I'm here with Pete Shurman. And he is the director of The Creep Behind the Camera. A good bad movie is one that is almost touching in its sincere incompetence. Action! You will never see incompetence more sincere than in The Creep Behind the Camera. Well, The Creep Behind the Camera is about, uh, it's a true story about the making of the 1964 monster movie, The Creeping Terror. This is actually true and not Fargo true, like it's nope. real true? Okay, this yeah. is absolutely true. Everything, okay. in, everything in my movie is true. Totally true story about a uh, movie director or wannabe movie maker called uh, Art Nelson. In 1960, California, he uh, convinced a whole bunch of people that he was making the best monster movie ever made. And he used, basically, in, in short, he used a piece of carpet to be the giant monster that's <laughs> eating people. There were like six or eight kids under that big foam thing. Ah! Okay, pull me in! So my movie's all about how he convinced all these people he was making something really good, but in, in reality it was probably one of the worst movies. In ever. general, he was making season zero before season zero yeah. happened. Awesome. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right, right. Awesome. <laughs> we are going big time! Are we, are we still rolling? You know, I was watching the trailer and that kind of reminded me a little bit of the story of Ed Wood. It's kind of like the flip side of Ed Wood, whereas Ed Wood was kind of a nice guy, meaning well. Yeah. And he just made really bad movies. Art Nelson is just one of the be biggest pieces of crap you'd ever meet in your life. And his, his whole goal was to kind of scam people, take advantage of people. Wow. And that's what my movie's about. It's kind of that side of filmmaking. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to your movie. <laughs> we all know some people like that, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Were you a fan of the actual movie that this guy made back in yeah. the day? Yeah. So you when came I, into it with a fan, and you knew a bit of the history, or were you baffled by the history you uncovered? It was something that I kind of uncovered over years. There was, um, I had seen it when I was maybe... 13, 14 years old. And at that time, there weren't bajillion movies made of monster movies or sci-fi movies. So a lot of things came out in the 50s, 60s, monster movies. And I thought I had a really good handle on all of them. Then this came on TV one night, and I was like, what the hell, you know, what the hell is this thing? And knew nothing about it, but we were in hysterics watching this, my brother and I. We just thought it was one of the funniest things ever. I still do. Still didn't know anything about it. We wrote to Starlog magazine. We, we were trying to find out something about the movie. Never, never could figure anything out. Then Harry and Michael Medved, who wrote the Golden Turkey Awards, Son of Golden Turkey Awards books, uh, bad film uh, uh, historians, they finally wrote about it in one of their books and gave a little of the hint to the backstory. And then over the years, it finally dawned me. It would make a really good story, and I'd found more like blog sites and whatnot talked about this crazy, how abusive this guy was. Wow. So putting all the pieces of the puzzle together took some time, but I'd always been a fan since I was like 13, 14. Sounds like a life's mission, then. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> and why did you pick Fantasia of all places? Well, they found us, actually. And of course, Fantasia has this amazing reputation. And we, um, I think it was thanks to Amsterdam. The programming directors there, either Chris or Rule, had said you should check our movie out. And yeah, we got contacted, which was incredibly flattering, of course. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, next thing you know, we're in, and uh, oh, yeah, we wouldn't turn this down on our feet. You know? You're impressing your wife right now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, right. <That's> You're kind <laughs> of. <laughs> He's just kind of like, yo, babe, She's I got turned, this. She just turned beat I'm, red. I'm so glad that I'm not using a tripod. Okay, so. How do you start filmmaking, man? Let's go. Let's rewind. Yeah, well, um, when I was in well, I basically high school, going into college, my brother and I did a, a spoof of Star Trek. It was called Hick Trek. It was like uh, the original characters with you know, rednecks in their place. This is Captain Slim T. Jerk in command of the RSS Bovine. We shot it in a Super 8 film. We, it was like a fan-based thing. You know, there's a lot of fan movies these days. This was the equivalent. When we finished it out, we showed it to a couple of these Star Trek conventions, and they ate it up. It was like, oh, this is great. And it just slow but sure became a cult thing. Several years later, we had it mastered to video and released it on DVD. Ah! 
So that kind of started things. Around that same time, I did a short film that got noticed by Disney, and I directed and edited, uh, co-directed and edited Disneyland's 50th anniversary special with Julie Andrews. Then, I, at the same time, I started getting. I in. might have seen that special. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Well, me and him, me and uh, the creep behind the camera over there are really big <laughs> Disney fans. Oh, seriously? Yeah, we're we're huge Disney kids. Yeah, it's it's called Disney's Secret Stories of Magic, and it took three years to make, so it never it didn't become the 50th anniversary show. It wound up just being kind of retrospective in one of those silver tin boxes. And it's now, it's kind of like a cult thing, a sought-after kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of cult recognition. Yeah, like kind of underground. Well, when you're making movies in Colorado, it's not everybody. When you're making knows. movies about creeps beyond cameras who make movies about worms that are like made of carpet, I guess that's the only way you can go. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> What degree of Trekkie would you say you are? Well, to the point that I've worn worn one of the uniforms. Okay, that, that would that would label are me. Are you pretty captain? Good. Are you number one? I I'm the fleet admiral. There you go. <laughs> I'm one of the guys in the red shirts. <laughs> This will make me a real geek, because of all the Star Trek movies, I like the very first one. Disco in space? The, with the, the disco pants and stuff? With the, yeah. Nobody likes that one. I liked that one because it was more oh, cerebral. BGs. Yeah. BGs. Yeah, very BGs. All kinds of psychedelic effects. <laughs> so you've edited Disney, you've edited um, Star Trek fan films. Uh, what would you say is your most comfortable genre that you like staying in? Uh, it's what we did with Creep, I think. Creep? Yeah, Creep Behind the Camera. They the kind of goofy humor coupled with things I love like monsters and yeah. you know sadistic people you got the movie done how, how long of a process between beginning to finishing it uh, four years four years it God. took four everyone years everyone I talked to today it's like no less than four years really Seriously? and some the, the person I interviewed today was ten years it's like you guys have passion and dedication yeah. how do you put up with it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of understanding and uh, you know you got to support your, your spouse his dream um, you know, I know it was his dream to make this movie so that's that's really it at the end of the day but but I'll admit you know for, after four years it it, it definitely uh, it, I was ready for it to be to be finished <laughs> so you married well yes I did I married very well miraculously actually <laughs> he liked it and he should have put a ring on it and did <laughs> Awesome t-shirts, by the way, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Who, who just had a main... A good friend of mine and always available for your movie poster needs, Mr. Greg Kleinert, who lives in Bend, Oregon. Mm -hmm. While doing research for this movie, what was the part that baffled you the most in your list? Like, I can't believe this is a true story. You think this is the kind of thing that's an internet, you know, uh, what do they call it, like uh, urban legend, that he would actually met and worked with Charles Manson in Spawn Ranch, California. Was, that was true. I had that confirmed. I'm like, come on, there's just no way. This is some of these blog guys trying to get attention or something. Yeah, yeah we researched it, and yeah, that was true. He That's hung out with cool. Charles Manson. It's a little different from, like, you know, Dennis Wilson from the Beach Boys, like, just having some orgies in his house, and Manson just happened to show up and wouldn't yeah. leave. But this guy went out of his way to he hang got, out with Manson, yeah. He got basically got stolen cars from the Manson gang to use in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sitting down sure, with us. Sure, yeah, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Guys. Just say your name and you're watching season zero. I'm Pete Shorman and you're watching season zero. See